Bonnie, let's begin with why it's important, especially for um, university students going into the workplace. Why is it so important for uh, personal branding, especially in this uh, day and age, especially for the students who are just up starting their career? Uh, it's very, very important because you find there are so many workers in any organization, mm -hmm. but you, for you, for example, for a person, you must be able now to be notified in an organization. So because the person who is known, who stand out in their work, depending on whichever department they are, the same person who gets promoted is the same person who gets picked even like for a promotion, or even to represent an organization. So you find that the moment you stand out in your organization, there are so many opportunities even within the organization because you're able now to grow to the next level. Even the management is able to spot you and be able to, if you want something to be done fast and in the right way, uh, so and so is the right person. Right. Yeah. And, and then... How is it different, perhaps, when it comes to personal branding for someone who has been in a, a career longer yeah. compared to someone who is just entering the workforce? Uh, it's different because somebody who has been uh, working for so long, now they have the skills, they have the competence, and they have the know, they know, they have the know how, they have the capacity. And somebody who is getting in uh, may be the knowledge but doesn't have the experience. So you find like sometimes it's very important when you're getting in as a, is the first time you're getting your job, that you're able now to find even people who can be able to mentor you, even the organization who have the experience and practical experience. Oh, okay, so someone at home could be asking, what is the personal image? When you say personal image, yes. what does that mean? A personal image is number one, we are talking about your mental picture of yourself. Okay. The way, the way you see yourself, your confidence, your ability now to pass out the knowledge that you have to impact to your employer, mm. to impact to your customer, to impact to your clients, mm -hmm. is what makes you stand out. What is the unique thing about you as a person? Do you have something that separates you from the crowd? You might be having a department with hundred people, but do you have that thing that make you to stand out person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The uniqueness in you that people can be able to identify out of the hundred, they can be able to see there is something unique with Zinzi. Mm -hmm. So personal branding, does it also come down perhaps to one's physical appearance, um, the grooming, especially in the working um, culture? Yes, it uh, comes now to, ref to reflecting even in your grooming, also in your ethical. So even there you present your ideas. Like for example, you might be known uh, this person is always in a suit. Mm -hmm. This person is always a three piece, is always the hairstyle. Because it's the way you are presenting yourself, the way you want to be seen by the people and the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, let's touch a very sensitive issue here. Yes. Salary. Yes. Do I have a right to negotiate for salary if I am just beginning my career? Uh, it's very, very important because most people, they undersell themselves and others oversell themselves. And for example, I try to use my example. When I got promoted as a head of training uh, in Akumat, and I realized, hey, I'm not getting the salary that I want. And then I realized, for me to be able to go and negotiate my salary with my boss, I must have something that I have proved that I have done A, B, C, D. So I had now to work very hard and have tangible results that I can be able to present. I have done A, B, C, D. Uh, and now uh, I'm asking for pay rise. Okay, so let, let's walk us through this in the yes. audience. The do's and don'ts of negotiating your salary. Yes. Number one, the, the don't. That is number one is... Uh, don't try to oversell yourself. Try to see, are you able to deliver? Are you able to convince? Because most of them, they go and say, I want 300,000. Mm. And they can't justify why they should be paid the 300,000. They're just quoting the figure what they have read. So number one, don't try to seem like you know too much. Have something that is tangible. Number one, be able like, to say, the things that you should try to see, something that your employer want. Mm -hmm. Always think about what if the other person, why are they hiring me in the first place? What is it I can tell I can be able to deliver? Because for me, I had to promise that the, these are the things that I'll be able to deliver. If you pay me this, uh, can you quantify? Okay, so how do you know when you are not overselling yourself? Uh, and when do you also know when you're not doing the opposite, underselling, underselling yourself? Yes. Number one, in overselling yourself, you can be able now to see 
is the organization in a position, is it able to pay? Okay. That is number one that you check. Among the organization, who is the highest being paid? And in, in your predecessor, how much were they paid? That is the first place. And then number two, when you, you don't understand, you have to do your research and be able to see in this organization or where you are working, like sometimes you are coming, you are very fresh in the market, you have never gotten a job, and you are going to present your case, you are going, uh, how much is your salary package? And you'll be able to see, uh, I should be paid 100,000. What will you be able to do for us that you are guaranteed that if you pay your 100,000, you are able to deliver that result? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you find somebody has come and say, give me 50,000. And you find this person has capacity to deliver and can even be paid 200,000. When do you ask for a salary increment or how often should one ask for a salary increment? Sometimes it depends on seasons. Sometimes it's maybe you have gotten a new, a new promotion. Mm -hmm or maybe you have achieved your target, you have surpassed your target. That is the right time because your boss is happy and things are good. But you don't go and ask for a salary when you're going at a crisis because they'll say, are you concerned? Do you have the good even for the organization? So sometimes it's a year, so other times it's in a season. Maybe you have achieved your target, maybe you have given your target my three, four times and you have achieved your target. So you see now you have something tangible to say, hey, you have given me this target, I have achieved target consecutively three, five times. Okay, yes. so when you're leaving one organization and you're yes. going into a new organization, yes. should that new organization give you a better salary automatically compared to your last one? Uh, sometimes a new organization, you can go and ask for more salary mm -hmm. so, and higher salary if you are leaving. Sometimes it's also about passion. You might be saying in this sector that I was in, I wasn't passion. Sometimes you go and take lower salary in a field that you, like, you, you can be able to see your prospective growth in your career. Because sometimes I have seen people and it becomes a very strategic move. You find somebody maybe was a manager and he may be a lot of good money and goes and takes a lower job but with a bigger title and because he can see the future takes a lower salary and because they are passionate, you find in the future even they will be paid even more than three, five times. Mm -hmm. But they are able to accept. Let me accept a lower and then because there is much growth in this career. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not about you can be, find somebody who is taking even a lower salary in where they are passionate and where they see growth. All right, let's talk about pitching ideas. Yes. What are some of those um, things that you've seen um, perhaps young people do wrong when it comes to them pitching their business ideas? Uh, number one is bringing sometimes investors too soon. Really? When, That's a yes, thing? Yes, it's a crime because you understand, most of you happen to understand mm -hmm. Because if you ha have results, tangible results, like this is my idea, I'm able to get this figure, it's just projections. You haven't tested it on the ground. You haven't executed. You don't have your customers. You don't know the profit margin. You don't know the sales. You don't have the actual numbers. So investor would say, wow, this is a very great idea. And they say, I want 50 plus 1 percent. So of uh, selling too early. Yes, you sell too early. So, so That's you, the you first have, mistake. You need proper timing. Yes, you need okay. proper timing. Then number two uh, is try to have the figures. Mm -hmm. uh, business is about numbers. Who Number one, what will be the sales figure? What will be the cost? What will be the profit? These are the things that they need. And then number three, get to know who are your exact customers, your prospective customers, the market share. What are you targeting? Who are the people who can be able to buy from you? So you must have this when you are pitching your ideas because people need bankable ideas. You must have bankable ideas because we are not lacking capital. We are lacking bankable ideas. And to have bankable ideas, you have to know who are your prospective customers. What is the market, market share that you are targeting to have? Are they willing to buy from you? How much are they willing to pay? Will you be making profit? What is the cost price? Okay, and perhaps some of the things that we should be doing, the do's now. Now, the do's. Number one, try to find, when you're pitching for your new idea, even in your organization, try to do a very good research about your, even your prospective investors. Mm -hmm. Get to know 
where have the, else have they invested first? Are they, would they be interested? Then number two, try to look for something unique that is going to make you bond even with investors. Even when you are pitching for them, it's like you are speaking to a friend so that you are not too much intimidated. And then number three, uh, try, try to make your business, every, the business plan is clearly written down. And that's the thing, a business plan can even be a page. It can even be a page. Sometimes you just have to have, uh, this is my idea, uh, these are my market share, uh, these are the profit, and these are the prospective people. Mm -hmm. And the reason they buy from me is because I have this unique, and then who are likely to be my competitors, because every investor wants to know, have you done your research? They don't do, want to do the research for you. As you say, in likely in the future, this is the challenges that I might likely to face, and how can we be able to overcome this challenge by doing A, B, C, D, so that there is preparation for you as an entrepreneur. They're able to see, wow, this person is really ready for this business. And speaking of entrepreneur, yes. what advice would you give, especially to people who are new to this aspect of of of, uh, of business and investment when it comes to looking for capital because a lot of young people would pro probably go to angel investors mom yes. dad friends yes or two get yes. a bank loan the most yes. popular thing yeah. three struggle through a nine to five yes. save what you can yes from five to midnight you're yes. burning the midnight oil yes raising capital and working yes. on your business are there other ways that one can raise capital other than those probably three three uh, ways popular? that you know yes uh, there is also partnership. Okay. Try to partner with people who are like-minded. Because if you are starting out in a business, try to find somebody else that, who else is interested in the business that you are doing. And I say bank loan is very bad for business when you are starting for business. Because you find somebody like Michael Dare started with a loan given by the mother. Mm. Even like Ariko Dantata, he was given a loan by his grandfather, the richest black man in Africa. So you find... The best thing is try to find those that you don't have interest because remember, business will always, you find that out of the business that start maybe, for example, in the first three years, you find like almost 90% will fail. Mm. And even those that survive, you find that only maybe like 70% will succeed. So the best way is also try to get mentors in business if you are starting up in business try to get mentors with practical experience who they can tell you here it works here it doesn't work because you go to a business and you buy that stock and you thought wow i have this stock only to realize the stock that you bought no one is buying and somebody make a killing profit on you so try to fast the most important thing is getting mentors sometimes they might not give you the capital but the knowledge and experience they will share with you will help you earn a lot of profits and even eliminate years of pain mm. as an entrepreneur. All right, so Bonikim, why is customer care very important? Be it whether I'm selling Mtumba clothes from the back of my car or selling my own insurance policy or sitting at the corporate level. Why is customer care important? I always say customer care is like the oxygen of the business because no customer no revenue mm -hmm. no revenue no business no business no income no salary no salary no life no life no bread so you find you need this customer the customer is the boss you must make sure that you are giving the customer more in you they spend on you because what we are lacking is actually the service. And service, I always say, there are two types of service. There is hard quality service, which is what you are selling. And there is the soft quality service, which is how are you selling? How are you treating me? Don't like, read or don't try to compete on the what. Compete on the how. Are you smiling? Mm. Do you greet your customer? Do you know them by name? Can you remember even their name? Can you even appreciate? Can you be able to see, oh, she has changed the hairstyle. Wow, he's in a nice suit. Those more small things, the smile, the greeting. Because at the end of the day, it is about customer elevating the way they feel. That they are feeling, here in this business, I'm receiving more in value than the cash value I'm spending. And that's why you find a customer can be able to drive all the way from maybe, let's say, Mrorongo, and go to Vika Road for shopping. Or somebody might walk even almost a kilometer just for a grocery. 
and there are so many groceries around there. Why? The way they are treated. If you treat customers as the king, they spend like a king in your business. Oh, I like that. If you treat a customer as a king, they yes. spend like a king in if your you business. If you treat them as a pauper, they will spend as a pauper in your business. Wow. So it's at the end of the day, how you treat them depends on how much they will spend on you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is the other aspect that I would like us to demystify, especially when yes. it comes to financial freedom. Yes. Can being employed give you financial freedom? Yeah. Being, being employed, financial freedom is first, let's say, define what is financial freedom. Yes. Financial freedom is when the money coming in is bigger than the expenses. Than the expenses. Okay. That is the first thing to, towards financial freedom. And we always say to start with six months. If you say, if your job ends now, how many months can you survive? Mm. If it's less than six months, that's a red flag. Mm. So it's all about uh, increasing your income decreasing your expenditure is about saving try to save save and somebody richard back said in his book automatic millionaire if you save more if you pay yourself more than 20 percent of what you earn you're on the road to financial freedom so ask yourself how much percentage do you pay yourself and then where you save does the money earn interest in your debt? because for example say circles sometimes are the best investment uh, vehicles that you can use towards your financial freedom because you must have a figure in mind. If I say maybe, for example, one million and I'm getting dividend about 10% or 12%, then that's in a year I would have 120,000. If I say five years, let's say that will be at least, will be, I'll be good to go. Okay, do you think entrepreneurship is for everyone? Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Just like, for example, we say even employment is not for everybody. Entrepreneurship, and I say, in entrepreneurship is about a passion. You must look, do you have a history in entrepreneurship when you are venturing into entrepreneurship? Because, and also it's something that can be nurtured. So you can teach somebody to be an entrepreneur, but at the end of the day, if they don't have that self-drive within them, that self-discipline, that the ability to push themselves harder and get to know what is supposed to be done the right time, Going to work for them. All right. Yeah. When it came, your closing remarks, more so especially to young people who are just beginning their career, that, that lifespan where you're just leaving university and beginning your career, especially for that. I always say it, it takes about 10,000 hours to you an expert. And that is two hours. If you take two hours every day, that is 14 years. If you take four hours every day building your career, it will take about seven years. But you must be dedicated. You must have a vision to grow and become the best in what you do. Whatever you do, make sure that you have a vision to grow to be the biggest and the best in your industry. Wow. Thank you so much, Bonnie Kim. You're welcome. All right, Bonnie Kim, he is not only a corporate trainer, but from today also a motivational speaker, Santi Sana, um, helping us understand personal development and why it's important and the different ways you can gain financial freedom. Let us take a quick break. When we come back, you'll meet three amazing people. They go by the term environpreneurs, environment and the